Okay. Chris, uh, Jack Collagesny, is he going to play? Yeah, that's the plan. So we'll, we'll, we'll go in um, with the same team at this stage that we took into the first final. As always with us, like we, it's a bit different with the Friday night game in that the teams go in 24 hours before. If, if it were 48 hours, I'd absolutely be saying that that's subject to change. But yeah, like that's, that's our plan at the moment. But as always with us, it's subject to change. Uh, it's a consideration. We've been through um, the, the possibilities. Um, I've got a pretty poor record when it comes to the weather. Um, it is, it's a good way to lighten the mood amongst our coaching group anyway, but I do, I do like to dot the I's and cross the T's, and we've been through all those scenarios. Um, but given we've spent so much time on it, Pete, it'll be dry as a bone. What's Jake done to give you confidence he's ready to go um, in the last week? Uh, he's just trained and ticked all the boxes that the medical staff wanted him to tick. And I think, you know, I spoke uh, at length post the Collingwood game about the faith that I have in our um, current group of, I guess, um, the performance team, which includes the sports science guys, the, the medical guys, the conditioning guys. Uh, I just have so much faith in them that I, with um, Collar, it was a matter of just taking a step back and waiting until was probably Tuesday where they said he'll be right. So it's nice when you've got that confidence. What's your thinking behind going with Segler? I mean, I'm standing there with Segler. Reese has had a really good year. Uh, and um, unfortunately for Segs coming in, he's to an extent had one thing after another, some foot surgeries, had a, um, a year that's been interrupted. He's taken his chance really well um, when he's come in. Uh, but um, we think that all things considered, and there are a lot of things to consider, that Reese is our best option this week. Tom Hawkins wasn't out there this morning. Is there anything to see there? Is that his normal preparation on that captain's run? Uh, it's always varied with um, a lot of our guys. Hawks, one of them. Um, they told me at the last minute that they, he wasn't going to go out at all. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not completely across it, except that he's completely fine. So, yeah, I don't get down into the minutia of the captain's run. I mean, you would have seen a little bit out there. It's very, very low key. Like, if you're walking around out there, you're only doing a little bit less than the other guys. He, he did sit out the other day. We thought he was doing some light drills. Is, is he carrying anything at the moment with Tom in, in terms of his body? No, nah, he's, in, he's in great shape. Um, I think you would have seen... You, you might be referring to the open session we had on Monday. So a fair few of our guys, Jeremy Cameron, etc., did some work on Sunday. So... They had a lighter day the next day. Maybe. Yeah, it's an option. I mean, he's, he's just he's had he's had a great season. Like, you know, I would expect he'll win the Brownlow. Don't listen to what I say because I pay virtually no attention to that stuff. But he's certainly um, he'd have to be in that conversation given the the year he's had. And his last two weeks have been uh, terrific as well. So he he needs to get some attention, it's kind of Russian roulette if you, if you just try to um, play too offensively against him. But as always with us, it's a, it's a collective and it can be a little deceiving to sort of look at the matchups, the first bounce, because um, it could very well be different sort of five or six minutes later. What have you made of the Lions during this final series? Oh, well, they played two pretty close games um, and played well enough to beat probably the best team of the modern era, however you define that, um, and Melbourne might be the second best. So that, that's, that's pretty good form. Um, yeah, we're, I think we've always been pretty clear, and the competition would have been clear, uh, around what their game looks like when it's really going. So it's quite... Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd refer to the best teams, you know, over, over my time in footy, it's generally... They don't trick you. You know what they're good at. It's just hard to stop. So I'd sort of put them in that category when they, when they get the game going. They're dangerous ahead of the ball and you know, were good enough last week to, to hang in when the game wasn't on their terms and then good enough to run it out late. If Marco kind of a live option to play on the field, does that mean he's coming into the 22 then? Yeah, to play on him, he'd have to come into the 22, but we're still sort of... Yeah, we're going to hold that back a bit. It's been a long time since you've played the a lot. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, round four, yeah. You've paid much attention to that. 
Uh, it's re- yeah, y- y- we, every team does. You always look at the last time he played and if it was two weeks ago, it's really relevant and if it was round four, um, nowhere near as relevant. The first thing you notice is how different the teams look and guys in different positions and we, we have evolved our game a lot uh, since that game. It, it was here. Um, I, can't, I can't remember the last time only occurred to me now, like Brisbane don't play Geelong at the MCG too often, it's probably the last time the two teams played in a final in Melbourne um, so yeah, look at it in the interest of being thorough, uh, but don't dwell on it too much. And have you given up hope of playing those big prelims down here? Uh, when the stadium's being redeveloped, I think there's no hope, but after that there's a great hope I would assume. Charlie Cameron's Um, oh, without prioritising, it's a whole range of things. Like, I think it's it's very similar if you if you look at the other end. I think if there's if there's beautiful and plentiful supply to Hawkins and Cameron and Stengel and Rowan, the Brisbane defence will have their handful. And I think it's the same uh, up the other end. So it's a bit like Lockie Neal. You go through their best players and it's quite daunting because if they get the game on their terms they're um, really good players. I mean again I would caution you went, I think you went back seven games like when was that seventh game? 2015 or something? Like, um, so yeah the relevance is sort of questionable the way we look at it, you know different for you you look at it different differently um, but going with a really strong plan expecting those guys to play at their best um, so we've got to have a plan that can at least limit them. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't... We don't expect to go into the game thinking Neil's not going to touch it and Cameron's not going to kick a goal. I think that's a bit naive. Mitch, Mitch Duncan spoke around the week about the extra rest you've had. You know, it's, sort of, you're gonna, it's going to be one game in the 27-day period that you've played. Um, he talked about that there are pros and cons. Do you think there are any, any major cons to, to that extra rest you've had? Uh, we haven't thought about it too much because... It's a bit like our lead into the final. Um, it, w- it was real that I think we played, you know, working backwards in Geelong, won easily, up at the Gold Coast, two games in Geelong, hadn't played at the MCG for a while, hadn't f- played in front of a huge crowd, the scoreboard wasn't close. Was it the best preparation for 90,000 at the MCG in a close game? Probably not, but what can you do to change it? So this is our preferred position to be in. So if you want to look at it that way, um, we wouldn't change a thing. We certainly wouldn't have lost the first week so we could play last week. Um, This is our preference and we've had a lot of time to think through how we were going to prepare with our training. So we go in feeling really confident in our preparation and really running um, on top of the ground. The guys that needed extra work have got it. Um, The guys that needed a freshen up have got it. So, yeah, we we feel... um, you know, a level of anxiousness that every competitor feels going into these games, but really confident in our preparation. And managing the midfield, obviously Paddy Joel spent time on the bench in that first final. Um, does that rest and that benefit that you've been able to give him over the course of the year allow you to let him a bit more loose by tomorrow night? Uh, no, we didn't hold back too much against Collingwood. Like they, they'll both spend time on the bench. I think if you isolate it to those two, the plan has been... Um, Forced upon us with um, Dangerfield, he missed you know quite a chunk. Um, I think which has really helped him, um, you know, in the now. Um, but again, we wouldn't deliberately take him out for eight weeks or whatever it was he missed. But I think you know all's well that ends well, and and we were really clear with our plan with Joel going into the season, and and that that's kind of played out pretty well as well. We've taken him out a bit um, proactively, and then the pre-finals by, and then the the week off after the first round has meant that he's probably had the type of prep that um, we would have been aiming for even if we played every week. Just on goal, I think he equals Michael Tuck's finals record, which seems incredible given Tucky's accomplishments. Obviously, you've got a lot of players that have got finals experience, but what does he help bring to you on a week like this? Yeah, it's an amazing number. I mean, I think it's an amazing performance for anyone to play one AFL game and to play 39 AFL games, but to play 39 finals, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. And he's just been, you know, he's led, uh, even when he wasn't captain, um, the Geelong team so well. So it doesn't guarantee you anything 
necessarily, but I, I imagine it must give him an extra um, layer of confidence that he knows what it feels like, you know, he knows what's required. You know, each game's different, so, you know, you've got to start all over again, but um, I think he goes into the game feeling confident about what he could, what he can achieve, and I think that's understandable. How do you compare this preliminary final team that you're coaching compared to the others that you've um, been in charge of? The experts seem to think you're a better place now than, than ever. Yeah, again, I, I spend almost zero time on it. Like, I, and I, I, the last thing I want to do is sound condescending because I get it. Like, we just have different jobs. You know, we're playing different games. Um, so I probably trust them a bit and their eye. Um, the things that spring to mind, if I think about it off the top of my head, is personnel. That's always obvious. Like, Cameron was nowhere near his best, at his best last year, towards the end of the year for various reasons, including being crook, prelim final day. Tyson Stengel wasn't in the team. Max Holmes hasn't played. Like, our personnel is a bit different. The system's a bit different. The opposition's a bit different. Like the last couple of final series we played were through a pandemic as well. It just feels so different. It's almost indescribable. Um, but yeah, into, I just I just don't play that game. I, I think it's really good theatre. I'm not saying that others shouldn't play that game, but we don't sit down and go, "How do you reckon we're going compared to three years ago?" It just doesn't make sense to us. Having said that, do you take any lessons from the prelim finals? For the places you played in a lot, you, you coached a lot now. Is it a different game? Do you, do you take lessons from? What I don't. I don't really buy into that. Like, I guess sometimes I do buy into it because I just want to give a succinct answer so we can move on to the next one. But yeah, f pretty overrated. All that stuff. I reckon the the most important moment for us is the next one. Obviously. Yeah, yeah we, I think you can. Um, now, you need to play what the game presents as well. Um, so I think if, if, as a coaching group, if you try to present to the players, this is exactly how the first five minutes needs to look and then it doesn't go that way, it can be really um, rattling for the players. So sort of talk through different situations and I think... That's really the way we've tried to build our game this year. You know, going back to probably October last year, it's sort of play the moment, play the situation, understand what we're trying to do um, when it presents, you know, understanding completely that um, the game isn't played. Maybe it, maybe it was 30 years ago, but it's just that the opposition's so good now that you can't just say, all right, this is the way it's going to roll out. You've got to have different modes for different situations. And I think, you know, it's... It might be the most obvious thing in footy in a big game. Let's start well. Sweet. You could you could coach that, Pete. Mitch Duncan spoke at the start of the week about the the shared load and how it feels there is a difference in, in terms of the stars not having to be the stars every week. Have you sensed that this year? Again, maybe I don't like to dwell too or too much, but have you sensed this year that the load being shared is, is pretty prevalent compared to, to recent years? Yeah, no, I, I think it's a it's a good observation and um, yeah, it's it's thought provoking for me. You're right. I don't think about it too much. But uh, when, when you talked about you know the stars not having to carry the load, I automatically thought, who who are they? Um, well, one, it's probably a big group, and two, it might be a little bit different to you know the the ones that have sprung to mind uh, in the past. So then I kind of overlay that with you know the teams that I've admired over the last twenty years, and that's what they are. They're deep. You sort of, it's kind of like if you stop him, then he'll get you. If he's down, what about him? And you know, Brisbane are a little bit like that as well. I think it's, I think it's offensive to them if you say that um, oh, Lockie Neal's got to flush it for them to win or you know, Charlie Cameron's got to kick five for them to win. I think they're better than that. And so are we. There was a moment last year between these two teams, I guess a level banks with Geelong and Brisbane. Do you expect that to play any part tomorrow night given the history between the two teams in recent memory? Uh, no, I don't think so. Depends whether Fags abuses me or not. <laughs> <laughs> he won't. He's fine. Have you spoken to him this week? Do you, do you speak to Scott? Yeah, I asked him what team they're going to play and... No, seriously? Oh. No, I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm not that. No, I'm not that way inclined. I don't think he is either. I doubt that's ever happened before a final, has it? Coaches ring each other for a chat. Yeah. You're joking. Are you joking? Who knows? Okay, worth asking, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. Just, 
just got awkward all of a sudden. Um, just, just one more. Like, you spoke about Mark O'Connor and the potential of Neil. Is Blitzar's a live option in that, given the type of player he is, the type of player he is? Yep. Yeah, I think that's, a, again, that's it's probably the extension of um, what I was talking about a little bit earlier with the, with the depth that we've tried to build and the options we have. We don't, we don't want to go in saying that you know, this is our plan and if it doesn't work we haven't got, or at least um, haven't tried other things uh, in the past. So th right throughout the course of the year um, in particular we've deliberately gone with um, different structures and, and change-ups uh, on the basis that we might need to, to use them later on in the year. And, and, and typically, I think in the modern game, um, uh, it's, it's a Hail Mary if you, do, if you try something in a final, for example, that you haven't at least practised. So we feel like that, um, that you know, Blitz, and he's a unique player, you know, the, I, I can't think of a player in the competition that sort of does the variety of things that, that he does. And, um, you know, that really helps the others because you know, his flexibility to sort of help out if things aren't going perfectly is, allows the others to play their game. Well, it sounds like you won't be reading the weather charts, but does it come into talking around you at all that it's going to be wet tomorrow night? And you have to no, no, I, I read them. That's the problem. <laughs> the, I, I focus on them too much um, and then get it wrong. But no, we've got to be ready for, for wet weather. Chris, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Does yeah. it change the way you play at all? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Again, this is this whole, like, it just, it's so obvious it's not funny to me that if, if it's a really dry game, the game's going to be played differently to um, to the way it, we, it will be played if it's raining really heavily. So, we, you know, you need to be prepared for that in terms of personnel, but also the way you play. Like, often in those situations, the team that adapts to the conditions the quickest um, can get out to a, you know, a handy lead.